welcome to a very unique CXQA Live. We are coming to you live from the Reuters Customer Service and Experience East event here in Brooklyn, in New York, and uh, we're really excited to be here. I'm joined by Stacy Sherman, and uh, Stacy's got some unique things going on. Her role here at the conference. I'd love for you to tell everybody, Stacy, maybe a little bit about what this event is 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 happening and and what your role is here this week. Yes, I'm wearing a lot of hats. Uh, I'm the chair for these two days, as well as uh, leading some of the panel discussions and the keynote on Wednesday. So a lot of giving value and getting value and making sure that everybody feels the same. Yeah, that's awesome. I, it's a it's a summit of, of brands and thought leaders and lots of other good things going on. Absolutely. You've got major brands here and they are all customer centric and sharing really good information that people are going to get to learn from. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's an opportunity for all of the important conversations that are going on in our industry to happen, um, you know, and, and so we, we're actually going to have a conversation here this morning uh, that's connected to one of the conversations that will be going on here at the conference. And, uh, you know, it, we, we've had a whole lot of conversations on this show. The industry is having tons of conversations on AI, but specifically we want to talk about utilizing AI to enhance human productivity and connection in CX. There's a, there's a lot of different ways that people think about and talk about AI. This is where we want to focus in today. Yes. And we are also making sure that people really take action, as I call it, doing CX right, not just thinking about it, pondering about it. We really want you doing it right. Yeah. Now, so all the ideas and hypotheticals in the world uh, don't amount to a whole lot if, if we don't actually engage in in practice and 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 doing the things that uh, that come out of those ideas. So. Um, AI in the contact center, there are a lot of use cases. There's a lot of different ways that it's talked about being utilized. Uh, what are some of those? Yes. So all of this, what we're talking about in terms of use cases are both to help the leaders and the agents alike. And so I want people to hear it from both lens. And by the way, what we're talking about here, some know how to do it, and this is just advancement. And others, they're just starting out. They don't even know how to use AI. And so I want to make sure that everybody understands that whether you're in the beginning or advance, this applies to you because you could keep only getting better from it. So one of the things that I found both working in a contact center and in a BPO is using the AI for listening to the agent conversation for the purpose of hearing legal or lawsuit or these key words that can actually cost your company so much money and that you can get ahead of. You can prevent it if you hear certain terms. And that's a great case for an AI to do an alert. So you're talking about uh, an AI that's listening to live calls for specific keywords that could be problematic for the business so that some assistance can be given to the agent in that instance. Absolutely. I mean, we're talking, this is low hanging fruit. This is not hard to do. And humans can't actually pick up so many conversations that are going in your contact center. It, it's too, it's not possible, but the AI can shorten that and give you that information to act upon. Yeah. So that's, that's a really strong use case. What are some other ones? So another one is using AI where when the agent is on the phone with the customer, they can actually not have to worry about writing every single word on paper because then we know they're half listening. It's too hard to use these multiple skills at the same time. So use the AI for the note taking. And then when the call is done, the agent can go and put some of those key points in the system if that's not already automated. So save the agent time and efficiency. And I like how both of those use cases are really focused on helping the agent to be better at their job without requiring more resources of the agent. It's essentially giving the agent some tools to help the agent be more impactful and effective in his or her work. Absolutely. Now, when we talk about listening to the agent calls, I want to caution you. This is not about listening to punish. This is about listening to actually be helpful. 
So you can use those recordings to be able to coach and mentor and then give them real examples of, hey, listen to this together and let's problem solve. So that's another example. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. What are some other use cases for AI in the contact center that are being talked about and seen widely at this point? Yeah, so there's two. One is that it's very difficult to have the agent go through multiple screens when they're on the call with someone. So the ability for technology to actually bring it together so that they're, it, let me say this again, companies have data silos, companies mm. have human silos. So technology can actually help with that, particularly the data. So agents have a lot of screens, they have a lot of data, they have a lot of customer information they have to look at real time. So that's another case where you can pull it all together and streamline the process for the agent in real time on the call. No, that's really good. And then of course we talk about uh, quality assurance is another one. Um, you know, there, there have been some really strong uh, AI QA solutions on the market for quite a while, um, you know, helping to assure that the call quality is what it needs to be. And, and, and in that case, as well as the case that you just mentioned, it's the ability of the AI to uh, accurately comb through tons of data in ways that it would take a thousand humans to do, right? Uh, that, that provides that value for, for the contact center. And, and just turning our focus just for a minute, because uh, we've, done a, we've done a topic actually a few weeks ago when we were at ICMI in Orlando that we called Human First AI in the Contact Center. Uh, we, we've talked about principles for how uh, AI should be thought about and utilized in the contact center. We're talking about two aspects of the agent's work, specifically the ability to be productive and the ability to connect with the customer in a human way that we actually think AI can help to make those things better, to improve both the connectivity with the other human and the productivity. We've focused mostly so far, I think you'd probably agree on the productivity side and, and quality and that kind of thing. Um, let's talk about human connection for a minute in, in CX. And, and, and there's, there's sort of this sliding scale, right? Uh, I don't necessarily need to feel a connection with another human if I need to change my password. Right. I, I'm, I'm not necessarily looking for um, a human empathy connection on every single interaction I might have with every company with which I do business as a customer. However, there are moments where and in certain industries, it's much more prevalent where that human connection is a critical part of the experience that you want that customer to have. Maybe you can draw out some of those uh, connecting points for us. Yes, I have a perfect example. So I used to work in the elevator industry and one of the things of many that my team would do is actually help the customer who was entrapped. And part of it was doing some surveys. Part of it was the call center. Wait, so we're talking about somebody's riding an elevator and the elevator gets stuck. Yes, entrapment, you are stuck. And you push the button. Yes. And your agent was on the other end. S yes. So the agents in our contact center were responsible for saying, hi, I hear you're stuck. Tell me about it. What just happened, et cetera. Talk me through it. Let me help you because I know I hear that you're claustrophobic. I'm working on right now getting a technician to come on their way. I'm going to give you an estimated time of arrival. Give me a few minutes and talk through. And we can listen to those calls and actually make sure that A, the agent is trained and helpful to calm the rider, you, me, us, in that elevator. That's so important. That's really humanizing the experience. And then if it's not done right, that's where the coaching is. But AI is not a case. That's not like passwords, right? An AI can't come on and say, hi, uh, I, I know you're stuck. ETA, estimated time arrival, two hours. Bye. <laughs> not right. going to work. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I think in that moment, I'm just putting, I've never been stuck in an ele elevator, but I, I'm just putting myself into that moment. And knowing that there is a human being that knows that this is not a good experience for me and that knows that I might be scared. I might be nervous. 
whatever it is. And some people who are genuinely claustrophobic, this is a big problem, right? So the ability to connect with, um, you know, a human being in that moment when you really, really need to, I, I really feel like the, the, that connection is really, really important in some industries. And, and I think about some of the moments when I, have, as a customer, have called in, um, you know, the dynamic of I'm going through something that my experience with your brand is frustrating to me right now. It might just be consumer friction. It might, you know, I'm not stuck in an elevator, right? But I'm frustrated. And my day and, and my life is made more complicated currently by your brand. The ability of a human to turn that around and make that a positive experience with the brand, I, I'm not sure that AI is going to be able to step in and have that connecting ability. Absolutely. So there are the right place, right time to do this. Also, you mentioned about calling in. And I want to also shift the narrative here because you could also call out. Mm. And one of the things that my team and I did was we actually did peace of mind calls. What does that mean? When we were at the toughest points of COVID, and it doesn't have to just stay in COVID situations, where we called and said, hey, we know we're all going through a tough time. We are calling not to sell you, not to do a survey right now, but to ask you, are you okay? Mm. And we are here for you and we are open. That's humanizing business. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think if we zoom out and look at business from 30,000 feet and you extract the humans, you don't have a business. Mm. You don't have employees, you don't have customers. So, you know, understanding what elements can be um, maybe taken over by uh, an, an artificial intelligence without sacrificing the core human value that the business is providing to the customer, that's a first principle. When you're talking about how are we going to implement AI? Well, are we sacrificing any portion of the value that we provide, the core value that we provide to our customer? And then the second piece is, how are we supporting the humans that are doing the work? And, and, and that's an important conversation. It's a whole separate conversation in some ways than some of the things that we've been talking about, um, because we've really been focusing on the customer. And we talk about customer experience, but uh, if you've been around the show at all, you know that we believe that agent experience is directly tied to customer experience. And um, if you just pretend like the agent's a machine, then that's not going to work well because that agent is actually the interface that you have with your customer. And there's so much uh, value that the agent can provide beyond just checking a couple of boxes in an interaction that are supposed to get done, which is something that an AI might be able to do. Um, so I, I think as we're kind of pivoting our conversation this morning, um, I, I know that you've done a lot of work from the agent side and understanding the way that agents think about the technologies that they use and the ways that it impacts their work. So I'd love for you to kind of take us down that direction for a bit. Yeah. So two things. One is the agents actually need customer service. I know that sounds funny because that's their job. They're providing customer service, but they need customer service. So when their computer doesn't work, they need te technical support and not put in a ticket and wait two days for it. I mean, that's real. That really happens. So I joke that they need customer service, but uh, it's no joke. The other thing is, and this is a pain point, as you can hear in my voice, a lot of times the, the agent's on the phone with the customer and the, there's a question that comes in and they don't know the answer. Well, guess what happens? They put them on hold and they have to quickly, under stress, find the answer. And here's what happens. The product teams and marketing and all these back office and frontline people have content, maybe in a library, that the agent's dependent upon. If that's not updated, they're going to have wrong information. Hmm. And guess what happens? The customer's frustrated. So the technology can actually be helpful with maybe a chat bot for the agent to find the information. But again, the human has to make sure the information is there and updated. The second thing is, and this is one of my favorite, this is about training. Now, now that's a whole nother use case. Oh, yes. That's a whole nother use case that we didn't even get to in the first half of the show, right? So thinking about, I, I know I jumped in there, but yes. I mean, really we're talking about a whole nother use case 
now that we've bridged over to focusing on the agent and just wanted to you know set that out there that you know training simulations and that sort of thing is a whole use case unto itself absolutely we could spend the whole show just on this but <laughs> i'll get to the bottom line that training and ongoing training and intentional training is essential now let's dig deeper onboarding we know they only have one chance to make a great first impression now an agent goes through from the time they're hired and recruited and we know there's best practices in that but you get them in the door and they go through training before that first call with a customer oh my gosh that is so scary i've talked to thousands of agents and truthfully many drop off before they're nesting before they're going to take that first call so ai is a use case that can be used for so many purposes in this regard. So for example, you can actually use the AI to give them a simulation as if a real customer was on the phone and they can actually walk through and pretend before they're live. And so they get feedback. They can get, they can get out their nerves it's, it saves costs in training and over and over again. I mean, there's so many cases, but I'll pause. I mean, this is just one of my favorites. I, I think the, the truth is that if we're thinking about human first AI in the contact center, if we're thinking about the agents, which we do every week that provides so much value, we want to find ways to enhance both their productivity and their ability to connect and, and training them well, giving them the opportunity to really rehearse what they're supposed to do in ways that are non-threatening and that don't negatively impact customer outcomes, uh, that's pretty much the ideal scenario for agents to train. And you have recently had a conversation with an agent about this topic, right? I did. I, again, had many, many, many agents and employees and gig workers, you name them, all work for me. And I would spend time asking them, what do you need? What do you need to be successful? And then most recently, the technology question, the AI question, are you scared? How can it be helpful? What's your take? So yes, let's share one of the conversations that I had. Yes, so we, we actually have a video of it. So we're pretty excited to share this with you. What do you think about artificial intelligence being able to be part of onboarding? So it pretends to be a customer and imagine mm -hmm. that you are able to be an agent for this artificial intelligence call her stacy <laughs> lack of better okay. name robot stacy is talking to Tresta <laughs> and role playing with you mm -hmm. and actually is able to give you coaching where you do well and don't do well before you get on the customer call what's your perception of that what do you think with what I hear about AI, I think that would be a great opportunity to get that coaching and get that feedback right then and there and don't have to take up anybody else's time. Picturing this as a use case of, of technology, does it affect your confidence mm -hmm. before you're going to be on the phone with a real customer? That role playing and immediate feedback. Absolutely. That would um, definitely, definitely help if you get time to, to do that because I was so afraid because of my cognitive uh, functioning issues, I wouldn't be able to think of the right things and the right words to say on the spot because I was struggling with that. And being able to role play with the bot or the uh, robot Stacy um, would, would be amazing to build up my confidence in giving me scenarios and situations that I would be in with a real person and being able to kind of see how I would think through that. That would be amazing, Stacy. That would definitely work on building up my mm -hmm. confidence. It's a really interesting segment there. Um, and, and, you know, this is kind of a little snippet of some of the core content that you share with the industry about the agent perspective and the agent experience and agent value. And, and I know that that agent that we just saw you interviewing is near and dear to your heart. Um, and, and, and so I know we could probably talk about a thousand topics coming out of just that one small segment, but endeavoring to stay relatively focused on how, uh, an agent would view this kind of a solution that is able to enhance their ability to practice so that they're not experiencing the interaction for the first time when they're live with a customer. It's pretty powerful. Well, she talks about confidence. I mean, that's a human relatable 
challenge. And I think that's what that AI can be used when done right to boost someone's confidence, to show up as their best self for the customer and for each other. Yeah. I mean, and you figure too, like new agents that are coming into being an agent for the first time and they've never had a customer service interaction of any type, the ability to even just do that without an actual customer on the other end, uh, it's sort of like an, an easy on ramp to the work that they're going to do rather than just being thrown into the deep end and said, don't mess up, you know, because there's a real customer on the other end. Absolutely. Yes. yes. So we actually have a little bit of an example we'd like to show you of a solution that's like this. And um, I'll kind of walk you through what we're seeing here. Uh, but it's, it's pretty powerful stuff, really. The idea simply being, and you can just kind of watch it unfold, uh, simulating that there's an incoming call or interaction request. And uh, just watch the interaction go for a second. So again, this is on the right hand side is the AI customer and on the left in the blue bubble is the agent that's interacting with it during this training session. So you're getting to see this agent's ability to interact just human to human. Uh, in this case, you're also getting to see whether or not this agent is very good at typing, which in this case, mm. some practice might be needed. But at the same time, the core conversation is going along fairly well, I think most people would say. And, and so I'm just going to go ahead and pause it there. Um, you know, the idea being with these solutions that it's a safe practice environment, right? And and so maybe you do need to work on your typing skills. Maybe you need to work on your grasp of the concepts of what's supposed to happen during a call, a specific call type, whatever it is. Uh, but the, the, the idea is that by giving this safe environment for training and then the ability to evaluate what's actually happened in that training, which uh, we didn't show in an example there, um, but that the power is there for agents to grow their own skills and for training environments to be designed around agents no longer needing to pair up with another human in order to role play. Uh, and that's pretty powerful as well. So um, just thinking about that human connection idea, you know, I can imagine having practiced this interaction three or four times with an AI. When I get on the phone with another human being, I'm not so worried about what is it I'm supposed to do. And I can listen for what's going on. Um, and I really, really, really uh, appreciate the, the human connections that I've been able to receive as a customer when I was having a bad day because I was working with that brand. So if they were to say to me, and sometimes this has happened, right? I'm sorry, my systems are a little bit messed up and, and I'm already stressed. Well, that doesn't help my experience with that brand. And so the business outcome really of customer loyalty and feeling comfortable with doing business with that brand is directly impacted by the comfort level of that agent in interacting with me as a human. 100% and here's the game changer, that you can take any tool that you have, you must as a leader provide psychological safety because then there will be resistance, then there'll be fear and it'll reduce the confidence. So if you couple that with the human providing that psychological safety with the agent having the tools to practice and boost their confidence before the real call. That's the magic. So, I mean, we've talked about several different use cases. We focused in for, for a little bit on training simply because I think it's, it's one that really espouses this principle of enhancing human productivity and human connectivity. 
in the customer service and customer experience environment. And I'm thinking about where we go from here um, because there's so many solutions on the market. There's a lot of marketing out there. There's a lot of buzz. We're getting to the place where operations and purchasing and IT in contact center environments are hearing from the C-suite and hearing from their leaders, well, we have to figure out how to utilize AI. Um, and so how would you direct an organization that's kind of feeling that pressure or that buzz to think through where to go from there and, and, and moving forward and evaluating these kinds of solutions? I would say pick one of the things we talked about today. These were not high investments These of energy, time, and cost. These are literally ways that you can dip your toe into the water. Pick one and test it, pilot it. I believe in pilot programs because then you can see and feel and examine before you scale. So try any of them. And there's tons of content, whether it's through this show, through blogs like mine, doing cxright.com, and tons on social media. The conversations are probably billions every day. So pick one, pick your source, keep learning, but doing it because otherwise you're just learning and, and it'll leave your brain. So pilot it. Try one. Well, and, and when you come down to vendor selection, yes, make sure that you're doing business with a vendor that will let you do that. Well, that's not only will they let you try it and mm -hmm. test it and learn and give feedback and grow with it. There are a lot of solutions and that's where customer service and customer experience comes in. It's the relationship with the partner you choose. Mm -hmm. That is going to make the difference because an AI is an AI. <laughs> a dial tone for a telecom company is dial tone, but it's the service and the heart at the business that differentiates. Yeah. And I think just to build on what you said, you know, the ability to adequately and accurately identify the pain that you're trying to solve within your contact center, that has to come first. So if we're just chasing an AI solution to say that we've got an AI solution, just like with any other type of technology tool, if we don't know the purpose that the tool needs to be used for, it's it's almost just rolling the dice. Hopefully you end up making a positive impact with that tool. It's at least as likely that you'll make a negative impact by implementing a tool that you haven't figured out what the purpose is and what it is you're trying to accomplish with that tool. Uh, I always talk about uh, you know, if, if you have a pen in your hand and you hold it really tight for 12 hours, that pen's going to hurt your hand. It's not because the, the pen is evil. It's not because the pen decided to hurt your hand. It's because you're not using the tool correctly. You know, if we decide we're going to use the pen to, to communicate, to write down characters and words, uh, we've now got a good idea of how to use that pen. That pen's probably not going to end up hurting my hand. But if we just don't know what is this thing and we just grip it and hold it for 12 hours, we've now used that tool in a negative way. Uh, and so I think being very specific in what it is you're trying to solve for uh, and, and then looking for vendors that will be able to help you understand the way that they help you solve for that and then give you the opportunity, especially with AI uh, right now in the marketplace, to try it, to see how it would be relevant and also to understand all of the types of concerns that might be relevant to your business. Absolutely. And don't let fear get in the way because that stops us in everything in life. So just start wherever you're comfortable. Absolutely. Well, guys, we're out of time for this week. Um, really appreciate you joining us. And uh, we're looking forward to a great week here at the Reuters Customer Service and Customer Experience event. And uh, looking forward to hearing what you have to offer the audiences and, and all the other brands and thought leaders that are here as well. We're thankful to Reuters for uh, allowing us to kind of piggyback and be a part of what they've got going on here. And uh, I'm sure we'll be reporting back on all of the golden nuggets that we get from our time. And wherever you are today, uh, make the world a little better wherever that is. All right. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. Thank you.